fiddle in the headphones. There was never a great tradition of a lot of people playing together. The older tradition was, was in fact, of one person playing in a country house, or at the most two. But this group, the Golden Harp group, were simply individual musicians that were picked out to represent the various instruments of Irish traditional music, and as far as possible, the various regional styles. Uh, at the same time, they were picked to show that people are also capable of coming together and playing together uh, in a certain common repertoire. Now, uh, I just, I don't play anything, I don't, I just talk, but I promise you, I... I promise you sincerely that I won't talk too much. I would like you to invite you to listen to our Irish music. In a few moments, I'll tell you who the musicians are, where they come from. But now we're going to have some Irish music. You see, I started to work for RTE back in the 1950s, collecting traditional music for the radio. Up to about 1950, this music was part of a hidden culture not widely accepted by the establishment. But this all changed in the last 25 years. This period saw a fantastic reawakening of interest in our folk music all over the country. The National Association of Traditional Musicians, known as Coltus Kiltori Earn, has played a major part in this revival. He'd like to know whether he's to come in on Sunday at 3 o'clock or 6, you know, if he's to come in for a camera rehearsal. Yeah, right. But it is also true that the regular weekly radio programmes and later television programmes did make a very big contribution to this revival. The reawakening of interest in folk music is also linked with the movement to restore our native language, Gaelic, which is, by the way, the first official language of the Irish state. Apart from Dublin and a few other places, Gaelic was the native language of the whole country up to, say, the beginning of the 19th century, and Gaelic is still the vernacular in certain areas. Yeah, well, Tommy, here I'll go down the floor. 
the loan agus ta sifsigalan de mart the movement for the preservation and the restoration of the Irish language started about 80 years ago and was one of the principal forces in the general national movement which brought about an independent Irish state in the 1920s Jack Austin West County Hotel uh, the great writer Chesterton in England one time wrote and said about the Irish people, he said, the people that God made mad because all their wars are merry wars and all their songs are sad. Well, our songs are sad, but mind you, our wars are sad too. And I'm sure that many of you who look at your newspapers and your television scenes know of very tragic things that are happening in in Ireland today. But we are not here to talk about that. That's in one part of Ireland, and it's a sad thing. But there is also a very good music and a very good life and laughter in Ireland also. And this is a, a very light-hearted love song. You won't understand the words, but uh, I can assure you that uh, the sentiments are very right, very clean, as far as I know. And uh, it's a sort of a dance tune which has a song. So Deirdre O'Brien in a Gaelic love song. I'm shik a smire, a sauce, and our neck, and no naska ki parch, and a ginal toro van a ha. Who she shall grow her heart is so fair if the mog is so live, is go brock, brock, ni scar, and me beam she shank yol. Party ni bela gum rexvaldi, or rexvaldi, I ate a Town a tari a fass, a mugarding go slack, the whole is pure nana, kiss car in the dark. Shukra he mile in the raw hack of tashka, consovis mishlamis than vavis than vanal trapim she shank yol. Party ni bela gum rexvaldi, or rexvaldi, I hate a lady. I started when I was about 11, I would say, uh, on the harp. But way before that, I did an awful lot of Irish dancing. And I kind of got a general interest in music. And I was sent to the School of Music in, in Limerick and did some classical playing on both violin and piano. And I started traditional singing. So I continued from there. to uh, teaching yourself? Well, yes, it was a hard choice to make because um, entertainment is so much lighter and uh, so much less responsibility. But uh, I teach um, children under 16 and I, it's very much a living tradition. This is one of the things that it, it, the revival of tradition music is absolutely marvellous here now in the country because there were never so many children playing and uh, we have about 30 musicians playing various instruments and uh, I'm only teaching roughly about four years now, but uh, they're very, very, very good. Right, lads. Sorry about that, Chief. Really? <coughs> now, as I was telling you last week, we are due to do a radio programme next week. Now, I taught you two Norwegian tunes, and I want to see how well we have them. And if we haven't got them right, we have to scrap them, right? So I want to start with Swira Yevere's tune, and we'll start again with the two beats. Is the, the bass on yours all right, Michael, there? OK. Quiet, please. Michael Morgan.
Um, just one more tune, the tallest selection. On my father's side, uh, music dates back since 1886. Um, Actually, my grandfather, there were 13 members in his family, 12 boys and one girl. Also, okay? And nine of the boys played in this um, band called the Borbai Band. I suppose but um, then on my mother's side, uh, there is still it, they have a dancing school my mother's sisters, and it's still in existence. It's the oldest uh, dancing school in Limerick. Now, Zang, what I want you to do is I want you to do two steps, and I want the Sligo made reel to be played at a reasonable fast speed. And when you have your two steps finished, Jackie, you come in and do the better reel, OK? And you do three steps. Then we can stop and we can see, is that item OK? And then we'll do Muriel. I'll explain about Muriel when you've finished, OK? OK, music. <laughs> Very good, very good. Uh, now, we're, Deirdre O'Brien comes from my own great city of Limerick in Ireland, which was founded by the Norse. But they did leave us a lovely city, but we told them when they had it built, would they please go home and leave it to ourselves? <laughs> Now, sitting next to Deirdre is one of our great traditional musicians who comes from County Clare in Ireland. I think some of you may have been there. It's west of Shannon Airport in a little place called Doolan, out on the coast of Ireland. The next stop after that is America. Michael Russell. You're known as a tin whistle player and as a singer, but you're also well known as a flute player. Does it take a long time to, to learn to play the flute? Well, it takes a long, long time. First, you see, I used to play it right tall, tall. I was playing for years and I didn't exactly 
not, not what he was doing like. But, but finally I learned to play the tunes right. This time of the year, exactly from the, from the middle of April until about the, the 24th of June, we do work cutting turf. That's for the winter fire, you know. It's a hard job. You, some bogs is easy cut, the same as timber, you see. What they call the bottom bar is, is better than the top. The deeper, near you go to the what they call the mud, the daub we we call it the daub. You have to spread it out and turn it first, and then what make. No, what they call a grogar. That means sides up against each other and one side on the top. The wind, the wind will get in and out through the sides. The, the, they'll dry quicker. Does it burn well? Oh, it is burning great. Staying here with your two brothers, and they're also musicians. Yeah. Do you often often play with them? Do you often go? I do. But we used to do a lot together when we were young. But my mother, the Latimer singer, never wanted us to play too much. You see, she said to us that you'd be better off to go working and to lead a different life. But we used to give no heed to him. We still. You keep playing. You couldn't stay away from music. No. <laughs> Today, in Irish folk music, the most distinctive instrument is the Illion pipes. These are a very, very uh, strange instrument, awkward, <laughs> and they are not like the Scottish pipes that one blows into. They are played by a sort of process under the arms, but uh, it, it takes... <laughs> It takes a very long time to learn these instruments, but Liam O'Flynn, who is with us, is one of the best pipers in Ireland, and still a very young man, even though it's, it, the old people said that it took 30 years to make a piper. Well, if it did, he must have started before he was born. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now he's going to play a tune, which is an old jig, which has a very, very refined Christian title, it's called I Buried My Wife and Danced on Top of Her. <laughs>
this normal procedure when you start playing the pipes? I mean, you cannot obviously, like a piano, just play a tune. You have mm -hmm. to, to practice for a long time. Yes. Well, the normal procedure is for a person to get a practice set, and that consists of the chanter, which produces the melody, uh, a bag and a bellows. So as we pump the bellows, I pump air into the bag, which acts as a reservoir. Um, this is, on this particular set, is, is really more of an ornament. There's, uh, inside, in this part, there's a reed. These two pieces are part of the drones, and the drones uh, are sounding continuously during the playing. And uh, these, this keyed portion of the pipes, these are called the regulators, which provide a, an accompaniment and harmony to the music. There's one more little portion. What there is? Uh, this is part of the... looks very insignificant, but it's mm -hmm. very important also. It's just a soft piece of leather uh, strapped around the, the thigh and the chanter is placed on this in order to make a, an airtight seal at the bottom of the chanter, in order to produce certain notes and to produce staccato effects. Yeah, I see. So it's part of the instrument, right? It's really part of the instrument, yes. Now what are you going to play? Uh, I'll play um, what we call a slow air, a song tune. Um, a tune I heard from the playing of um, Again, the late Willie Clancy. Uh, it's called Dark as the Colour of My True Love's Hair. Why did you choose an instrument like that? It's very difficult to say. I think I remember hearing on the radio once, and it was, I think I must have been about maybe six, between six and eight years of age. And uh, it was, in fact, a program of Kiron's. And uh, I'm sure, as far as I can remember, the piper at the time was Willie Clancy. And uh, I can remember being particularly uh, taken by this, this music. And uh, since then, I've followed the, the sound of the pipes. Nemo Flynn and the pipes. We have two musicians here from County Kerry in Ireland, which is the very southwest, and as I said, a very uh, wild country. Well, and a very wild people, but uh, the music, the music is refl uh, reflects the wild character of the place, and uh, they play dance music of all kinds. But they have a very, very special kind of dance music, which is indeed very, very like Norwegian music. Because last night we did meet some Norwegian musicians, and uh, there was quite some music in common. So Donald O'Connor on the fiddle, and uh, who is, by the way, uh, works sometimes as a school teacher, uh, but uh, the children who come out from his school seem to be more interested in music than in anything else. Dennis Doody here is a Kerry man, but he runs Shannon Airport, which is on, uh, 
which is on strike at the moment, and that's why we're here. Uh, here as um, an airport electrician and um, part of my responsibility and duties are when I'm on duty to check all the airfield lighting to make sure that it's all working and if it's not working I have to do something to put it back in order or else I have to report it so that it will be uh, done the next day. Um, sorry I have to get in contact with the tower. Electrician's hand power. Uh, Would you switch on the lights on the jet runway for me now, please? The low intensity lights. Could you also switch on the 24 at 06 high intensity runway lights at brightness 3 now? Are you working shifts out here? Um, well, it doesn't interfere that much uh, with me because if there if there's any musical fest festival or anywhere that I want to play, they, my employers are usually they usually facilitate me by giving me time off. So I'm quite happy with that. Mm -hmm. Now, guys, uh, today we're going to. Uh, do a lesson on the flower, and uh, we have some flowers here in, in front of us. Could anybody tell me what's the name of those flowers? What? Tulips and wallflowers. Tulips and wallflowers. Now, Dunlop colors. So this is your normal uh, work, uh, administrating and teaching biology. Yes, that's correct. I'm the principal of the school, and uh, my duties as, as principal and administrator. Uh, are also part of my work. Mm -hmm. now, do your pupils know that you are a fiddle player as well? Well, they do, of course. Um, they have heard me playing on radio and uh, have seen me playing on television on various occasions. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, at some local concerts and school functions. Porkies and slides are played more in Kerry than in any other part of the country and that particular music is played for the Kerry set dancing and it's a very strong tradition and a very living tradition and it has lived uh, almost uh, down for several hundred years 